Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.9.1 Basic Switch and End Device Configuration. This Packet Tracer Assignment is part of the CCNA Version 7 Introduction to Networks Cisco Network and Academy Curriculum. This particular Packet Tracer happens to be the Skills Challenge Lab Packet Tracer Lab for Module 2 as well. So in our lab, we've got a similar setup where we've got two uh, PCs and two um, switches. Now, in this particular lab, when you open it up, uh, since it is a skills challenge, it may open up with several different scenarios. It could have different IP addressing schemes here. Um, it could also have different device names. So if you see something different, the configurations are mostly the same, but it does have a different IP address scheme. Um, you kind of go to the same place. You may just have to type a different number, IP address. Also, your passwords may be slightly different, but just use um, the framework of this lab to complete yours with the specific scenario that you open up your packet tracer with. So the first thing we notice is that if we try to click on the room 145 and room 146 switches, it says the configure is locked. Remember, we talked about that in a real world situation that you have to use a console cable to get from your PC to your switch or your router if you're not remoting into it. And remember, you have to set up the remoting into it part, uh, you know, locally through a console connection first, usually. So we're going to have to use the con connections and connect a console cable from the PC's RS-232 port to the switch's console port. And we can connect the reception PC's RS-232 port to the room 146 console port. All right, so we've got them both connected. So I'm going to go to the manager PC over here that's connected to, to the room 145 switch. I'm going to go to desktop, terminal, click OK, and hit enter and you'll see my switch configurations come up and available here. All right. Let me zoom in. All right, so let's get this in the same space. All right, so it says to use a console connection, we did, and it wants me to name them appropriately to which one I'm on. So I'm gonna do enable config T, and it wants me to name this one room 145. Remember, use your directions, okay? So host name room-145, enter. Remember, we have to put that dash in there because they won't take a space. Um, it says use this for password for all lines. All right, so line con zero, and we're gonna do password eight U B capital R U. So eight lowercase U B capital R lowercase U, and then log in to force it to use it. Now also in this one, we're gonna set the remote login. So we do line VTY 015. What this will do is set up us to be able to remotely log into it and zero through 15 means that I have 16 users that can log in here because each user gets assigned a channel number. So zero through 15 means there's 16 channels. Then I'm gonna do password, the same one, eight U B capital R lowercase U and log in, okay? Then we are gonna use uh, the C9WRE as the secret password. So we're gonna do enable secret, and this one's capital C, nine capital W, lowercase r, uppercase E. Remember these are case sensitive, so make sure you type them correctly uh, so that you can get back into your device. All right, then it says encrypt all clear text passwords, service password, dash encryption will do that for us and then configure any banner message of the day so banner motd and then in quotation marks uh this switch belongs in room 145. all right whatever you want it to be and then make sure you just end it in a quotation mark as well and then configure addressing for all devices according to the addressing table. So that's up here. So we'll notice that the switch here for room 145 for the VLAN, remember this is so that we can contact our switch remotely when we want to tailnet into it or better yet, SSH into it. We haven't covered that yet, but we will. 
uh, for you to be able to remote into it, it has to have an IP address. This is one of the spots that you can assign it on a switch because ports on a switch, physical ports don't get an IP address unless it's a layer three. This is a regular old layer two switch. Um, and switches, layer two switches care about MAC addresses, not IP addresses. So here we're gonna set it on our virtual LAN interface, uh, VLAN one, and we did that in our previous lab. So uh, 172.16.5.35. So we're going to do interface VLAN 1, hit enter, IP add or IP address, and I already forgot, 172.16.5.35, and then the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. 255, and then you have to type that famous no shut or no shutdown command, either one will work, to turn it on and allow it to be usable. So before you exit out, make sure you double check your passwords because again, it, I would hate for you to have to start over the whole lab if you can't back, get back into your switch, all right? So I'm gonna exit out one step and do a copy, run, start, enter, enter. That saves my configurations, all right? So now I gotta go do all this similar stuff to the other switch and I'm connected to that one through the reception PC. So I'm gonna <clears throat> click on the reception PC, desktop, terminal, click OK. And I'm gonna use that same basis for these commands for that one. All right, so I'm gonna do enable config T. So we're gonna do host name, room-146. All right, that'll change our host name. Then we're going to change the password for all uh, lines. We're going to set that password. So here, let me drag this over some. All right, so we're going to do line con zero, password eight, lowercase u, b, capital R, lowercase u, login. Then we're going to set our line VTY passwords for zero through 15, uh, password eight, U B R U log in to force it to use it. Then we're going to set our uh, secret password, enable secret, and then we're going to use the capital C 9 W R E. Then we're going to encrypt all pa plain text passwords with service password dash encryption. You can use a tab key and it'll finish it out for you. Then we're going to set a banner MOTD. Uh, whoops. This switch belongs in room 146. All right. Or whatever you want it to be. Doesn't really matter. Then we do line, uh, whoops, interface VLAN 1. And we're going to do IP add. And we are going to set the IP address to 172.16.540. 172.16.540.255.255.255.0 and then no shutdown to turn it on and we're going to exit out one more time copy run start and the last thing we want to do is also set our IP addressing for our PCs the manager and reception PC so on the manager PC we can close this terminal out once we save it and we're gonna to go to IP configuration and we're gonna set it to 172.16.5.50. Hit tab. It does not suggest the correct subnet mask, so make sure you change that. Um, and again, make sure you go off of your PC names and IP addressing. Your scheme may be different, okay? Then you can click the X there, click the X there. Then for reception, IP configuration, and it is 172.16.5.60. Again, it does not suggest the correct <clears throat> IP address. It selects a class B, so you got to put it as a class C here. All right, we'll talk about what those are later. And that gets us to a 100%. Now, the other thing we want to do is make sure practical situation that we can contact each other. So we can try from one end to the other. Remember, if you kind of piece it together, that'll show you your progression across the way. But I'm going to go ahead and try all the way. So I'm going to go to command prompt and I'm going to go to ping. Uh, so I'm on manager. I want to ping reception. So 172.16.5.60. Hit enter. 
and I get all good replies. Now, again, if you don't get all good replies after a couple tries, what you can do is try pinging room 146. Let's say, can I at least get to room 146? If I can't get there, can I at least get to room 145 so you can identify where the issue may be? Now, again, I got all the way across and you can do it the other way too. So from reception to the manager, ping 172.16.5.60 and I'm getting good pings back and forth to both, all right? Um, so again, <clears throat> you can see that gets you to 100. Uh, that also reviews all the plethora of commands we learned and in module two and why we type them in. So I hope that helps you kind of cap off module two. And remember, these are very important commands because even when you get to our second and third Cisco class, you're still gonna be using these very same commands to start up our setup of our switches and routers.